Hello, I am Parni Jaggi. In this second lecture on Dylan Thomas and his famous poem Fern Hill, we are going to be looking into how beautifully he has used the poetic devices and symbols in the poem Fern Hill all through the poem. Now, as we discussed earlier, Fern Hill ranks among Thomas's most famous poems. When we talk about his style, we find that the poem employs simple but lyrical language and imagery to evoke the joyous and happy period of his own childhood. And the poem is chiefly concerned with youth and nostalgia and it speaks of a span of life when the concept of age was unimaginable for him. So as a child, he let go of everything that he found around him and he did not realize that his life was in the shackles of time. Now time is an important symbol as well as personification in the poem. Time is personified. He says, time let me hail and climb, golden in the heydays of his eyes. And then he says, time let me play and be golden in the mercy of his means. And over the flow of the poem, the final stanza looks at time, at this image of time as a sentient being. At a later age of his life, he, he, he realizes that nothing I cared that time would take me. Time held me green and dying. He realizes that it was time all the time that was holding his hand when he was in his heydays, when he was enjoying the green color of life and now when he is approaching death. So Thomas conveys the sense that though time does indeed pass, but it is merciful to the youthful narrator who dwells in a timeless idol. Then we have this pastoralism, the pastoral idol found in the poem. The imagery of the farm where he is playing and having a nice joyous time represents the Garden of Eden. It was all shining. It was Adam and Maiden. So it must have been after the birth of the simple light in the first spinning place. Now this imagery is again coupled with, supported by reference to apples apple boughs and apple towns. Now this conjures a sense of the Christian concept of the paradise, the story that we have known for a long time about Adam and Eve having eaten apples and then they were thrown out of the paradise. Thomas also repeatedly uses the words green and golden, happy as the grass was green, golden in the heydays of his eyes. I was green and carefree and the children green and golden. So these symbols, the colors as well as the, the evocative imagery of the poem makes it even more impressive and effective. Then there are the symbols of the sun and the moon. He does not relate to the spending and passing of the time in a simple way like we do that with the passing of the day or the passing of the night. But in fact, he gives these images to the sun. So these, these words repeatedly appear in the poem. When he says, in the sun long it was running and the sun born over and over, it conveys the idea of the endless day, contributing to the theme of youth, which was untouched by time. At a time when he was young and a, and a child, he did not know the transience of life and the hold that time had over him as well as the sun and other objects of nature. Then there are references to the moon. They are in opposition to the idea of the sun. He says, all the moon long I heard and the moon that is always rising, they conjure images of night and the sense that darkness, which also relates to the dark phase of life, that is the old age, is always present even in an idyllic world. So no matter how ideal, how idyllic our world or life is, yet there is always a dark side represented here by the moon. Then there is the symbol of youth. 
Youth is what he thoroughly enjoyed in his life. The narrator in the poem is young, existing in a world as he views as untouched by time. Dylan Thomas uses the imagery of youth to convey this idea and he does it repeatedly like a refrain. I was young and easy, children green and golden, all these colors and pictures create a panorama of the carefree days of his childhood. Then even the sun itself is subject to his imagery. The sun that is young once only conjures the idea of the sun as something born or created and that it also ages just as human beings do. Then in the final lines of the poem, the poet uses the imagery again stating that he is green and dying. He is still young, he is still colorful, he is still enjoying but now he is dying. Dying in the sense that now he has the realization that he is mortal. He has to die and death is inevitable. Then apart from these sun moon symbols, we also have the symbols of creation, Adam and Eve, the book of Genesis, we have colors, green, golden, we have animals, owls, horses and these are all symbols which denote the cycle of life and the life itself which are beautifully brought out as imagery in this poem. Then we find personification and parallelism in the poem. Just as we saw the parallel between sun and the moon, similarly here the house is personified because the house is showing joy, it is as if dancing with joy, such is the house of God, such is the universe of God, such is the creation of God. Creation is recent as the clouds are newly made. So this is the vision of a child. But he says old age is also here and happiness remains in the heart. Happiness has nothing to do with new or old, birth or death, but happiness remains inside the heart. With the son being born over and over again, God and his kingdom are eternal. Now at times he is concerned with the cycle of the uh, born, being born and dying of the planets like sun and moon, these heavenly objects. On the other hand, he has a parallelism. He is portraying the binaries of transience and eternal. The kingdom of God means the creation of God is eternal. Now here God here is divinity. So the divine ethos under which we are all living is eternal. Looking at the tone of the poem, the poem although begins with a happy tone with playful memories but there is a dramatic shift in the later part of the poem. Towards the end it grows melancholic and regretful. The speaker is no longer swift and free spirited. He is now chained to sadness and old age. Oh, as I was young and easy in the mercy of his means, time held me green and dying, though I sang in my chains like the sea. So now he realizes towards the end, towards the later phase of his life, that the clock of death has been ticking the very moment our heart starts beating. So ironic and cruel, but this is how life is. Towards the conclusion, uh, we realize that the poem is beautifully replete with metaphors and biblical allusions and bears a striking resemblance to the real life itself. Time for him is a weary thing, no doubt, but it is also a beautiful thing. It is slow yet fast and moments and experiences sometimes are severely lacking in appreciation because of our inattentive and impatient eye. We do not appreciate things of nature, things of our existence just because we do not realize the significance of time in our lives. Youth, children and adolescents lean more to living in the present, not appreciating life as a complete whole. When this fact comes to light, it is often too late and all there is left to do is to reminisce and regret and yearn for the days of yore, usually in middle and old ages. 
So therefore we see that it presents a universal predicament of man through a beautiful pastoral and nature poem, Fern Hill. Thank you for now.